So hopefully we can hear. We're going to start the module here together. Another email for you, Mayor. Take a look. Seriously, it hasn't changed since I was six, but I sure have. I've been saving up the last few months of allowance along with my birthday money to get some new stuff for my room. There's so much I want to do. Can you help me make sure I get the most bang for my buck? I know I won't be able to do everything, but I want to make the most of what I have. Sincerely, David. All right. So you, right, you're in that middle school age where you're sort of you're starting to transition from a kid to you know wanting to be a little bit more adult like so maybe you've outgrown your room so that seems like david so david wants to kind of update his room spend some of his money on his room mayor this is a great opportunity to help one of your younger constituents but before you help david let's see what you already know okay so which of the following would be something um, that would be considered a want rather than a need? So what is something here that you do not need to live in to survive? So you can type in the chat here. I'm looking around here. A, B, C, or D. I don't know if this chat pops up when I'm sharing or not. But Ozma and uh, Ethan, hey, nice. Thank you. So that's correct. Um, so a variable expense would be something that uh, changes. So it it's um, it goes up and it goes down, you know, from time to time. So it's not the same every month. So some things that are fixed would typically be things like like rent or loans or mortgages um things like that so what would be something which one like changes a lot or could change a lot each month a b c or d so eating cost of eating out d that's a good guess Ozma. so health insurance um is is generally a flat fee every month so usually you pay the health insurance company the same amount of money every month. Same thing with a car loan or a house loan or rent. But you may not eat the same amount. Maybe some months you go out to eat twice and sometimes maybe go out four times or something. So where you're going to nice a nicer restaurant versus a cheaper restaurant. So you food is going to be something that's you know, maybe it's it's similar, but it's going to fluctuate some. Um, so let's see, these are, so we're going to buy a computer and we want to do some research on select like the best model. So these are kind of some things that we hope to kind of learn by the end. But um, do you think that if we're buying a computer, do we want to do research on the com the computer company's website is do we think that is reliable should we trust advertisements that well i'm sure you guys don't read magazines but you know maybe it's on instagram or something should we trust you know instagram advertisements should we trust an independent uh, consumer education website or should we trust a salesperson? So think of somebody at Best Buy or someone or something like that uh, who is working there uh, to sell things in the store. What do we think there? C, good job, good job. Yeah, so we want to choose like an independent uh, website that reviews and rates things because they're not uh, they're not really attached to to the actual product so obviously the computer company they're trying to profit off of you so um we can't completely trust what what they're saying they're trying to sell as many units as possible the advertisements made money from the computer company to put them even instagrammers right instagrammers make a lot of money by doing advertisements or tiktokers um 
and sales, oftentimes salespersons make money off of each unit that they sell. So independent uh, websites are like less tied essentially to that. And then, so one thing that we are gonna look at today is this opportunity cost. So when you're thinking about opportunity costs, so what we're gonna look at in this module is everybody has a fixed amount of money. They have a fixed budget. So that's gonna be how much money you're making compared to how much that you have to spend on expenses. So expenses are going to be things like rent or mortgage payments. So that's the place that where you live. That's going to be the food that you eat, you know, the clothes that you're wearing, things like that. Um, like health insurance, maybe a car loan, things like that. Those are going to be things that you have to pay every single month. Those are fixed costs. And so each month you're going to have hopefully some money left over and that would be your budget. And so let's say you have $100. If you spend $10 going out to eat to, I don't know, Chipotle is on my mind for some reason. If I spend $10 on Chipotle, then I no longer have $100, I have $90. So I'm receiving one benefit, but I'm trading off a lot of different decisions that I could have made. So each decision that you make with your money, you um, essentially are denying many other choices, right? So it's like, it's a, it's a trade-off of, of when you make one choice, you're kind of at the same time denying a lot of other choices, um, which, so yeah, I definitely told um, you this one. So it should be, should be choice B here. And um, for a, a budget, if we're trying to make a budget, like we said, we want had to have all income. So all the money coming in and then all everything that we have to spend. So that includes the variable expenses like food and, and um, like clothes, though that will change, right? So it's, we're almost, I mean, we've, we're lucky with the weather right now. But we know at some point soon, it, you would think that it's going to get cold. So maybe you need, maybe you need like more sweatpants or maybe you need, you know, more sweaters or a big winter jacket. So that would be, you know, something that maybe you would budget for, uh, you know, now or the next month or so. so that, that would be something like a variable cost. Time to get started. First, let's see what David wants to update in his room. All right, so let's take a look at this room. Chances are he won't be able to do everything and still stay within his budget. You'll need to help him decide which redecoration changes are needs and which are wants. Click on the different objects in the room to help David decide whether an item is a need or a want. All right, so you can see they're kind of like a, a little bit highlighted uh, for us here. So I'm just gonna click on the first thing here. So this looks like, uh, curtains. These curtains are all right, but with all the other changes I want to make, these should probably get an upgrade too. So if we look carefully from um, from David's language here, he actually uses the word want. Okay, so so David's really unhappy with his room, and so in his head he's trying that he wants us to change everything. But you know, like everyone, you know, a certain amount of money to spend. So, but he, this is something that he clearly wants to do. So this is definitely a want. He doesn't have to change these. Okay, so this would be a want. Okay, what about? This dinosaur wallpaper is so embarrassing. This room needs a serious paint job. All right, so he no longer wants his room to look, have a, I think it's dinosaurs on here. So. He's using the word need, but, so he does use the word need here, but does he actually need to paint his room to, um, you know, 
live in a safe place and have food? No, of course not. So this is still a want of his. Okay. I keep oversleeping and missing the bus for school. My parents say I'm old enough to get out of bed myself, but my clock doesn't have an alarm. <laughs> All right, so getting getting the school on time is really important, right? You can get tardies. Um, you can miss classes. You can get behind on work. So you definitely want to be showing up to class on time. So this is, it's pretty important. It's pretty important uh, here. You know what? What do you think? Should we classify this as a need or this is a want? I think we probably most of us use an alarm clock, I would think. Yes. Oh, Angelina's still uh, connecting the audio, but yes. Okay, so let's, we'll put that as a need. Thank you, Osma. Let's click on the bed sheets. This dinosaur blanket was great when I was six, but it needs to go extinct now. All right, so David's over dinosaurs. He definitely wants it something else. But what do you think, a want or a need? How important is this in David's? All right, Osmond says a need. So I think if the question was, uh, you know, his bedspread isn't warm enough or something, then I think it would definitely be under the need. But I think really David is just saying that he doesn't like the way it looks. So I think the appearance of something that's that's different than it being, you know, <clears throat> not warm enough in the winter time or something, or, you know, maybe too hot in the summertime. So I think because it's appearance only, I think this should be a one. There's a teddy bear over here. Mr. Fuzzy, time to give up your spot on the shelf. That's where my wireless speakers can go, so I can finally get a quality sound system in here. All right. Bluetooth speaker. What about that? A need or a want? A want. Yeah, good. Kind of reminds me of Toy Story. This toys are being put up. Um, Looks like... Some note cards. Right now, the only pictures I have are on my bulletin board. They're tiny. I'd like to get some large posters to make these walls pop. All right. So he's using the words I liked. I would like to, right? I would like to. Um, so what does that give us a hint here between want or need? So I think when we when we use the language, um, yeah, want. Very good. And I, I do my that. homework at this desk to get some peace and quiet. Problem is, the desk lamp isn't bright enough for me to do my homework at night. All right. Seeing your homework and being able to do your work at night is pretty valuable. That sounds pretty important. All right. Thank you, Ozma. Let's call this a need. Let's see what happens. I'm saving this spot for my mini fridge. No more grabbing a drink from the kitchen. I'll practically never have to leave my room. All right, he wants a mini fridge. I think this seems a little excessive. Yeah, let's call that a want. Hate to break it to you, but all of these are wants. Needs are things you can't live without, like food, clothing, and shelter. That's correct. But the purpose of this exercise is, is, is for us to help prioritize the wants that we have. So certain wants that David has are you know, more serious, more urgent um, than such as getting the Bluetooth speakers or the mini fridge. Okay, so we're going to uh, rank them here in a little bit. Wants are things that you would like to have but the line between needs and wants can be tricky. For example, you might need a jacket in the winter, but maybe you would like to have a brand name jacket that costs more. Even though the jacket itself is a need, it can become a want if you end up spending extra money on a more expensive brand named one. Definitely. Okay, back to David's room. 
There are some items on his list that are closer to needs than wants. See if you can figure out which one. Even though none of these items are true needs, it's still a good idea for David to prioritize his wants based on their importance. Um, so this is, um, this is gonna be something that you're gonna be, you know, maybe you're not always writing it down, but it's certainly something that you do in your mind all the time. Whenever somebody gives you money or you have money, you earn money, you're thinking, you're prioritizing, what should I spend this on or should I save it, right? You're thinking about these things here. So even though that all of these technically are wants, there's different priorities here. So I think there were two in particular that seemed to be really important that could make a big difference in David's day. Um, what two of those do you think those would be? And so please type in the chat. Um, Angelina, welcome. And Pietro, welcome. Uh, you can um, type in the chat uh, here. So David is trying to update his room. So things that he wants to buy are alarm clock, bedding, curtains, desk lamp, mini fridge, posters, stereo system, and a wallpaper. So which things do you think would be really important that we prioritize David's money? We're going to go shopping soon. So that should be pretty fun. So remember, David was saying that he was sleeping in. He wasn't waking up on time. That seems pretty important that we address that. No one wants to be alarm clock. Yeah. Thank you, Osmond. Oh, I got to wait. Think about which items David needs to be successful at school. These are going to be the most important items and closer to true needs. Excellent. David needs an alarm clock to make it to school on time. Definitely. All right. What else was uh, school related? What else was kind of hindering his, you know, making it harder for him? The desk lamp. Thank you, Pietro. And Ozma, thank you. Great. Having a brighter desk lamp will help David have a bright and quiet place to do his homework. That could help him boost his grades at school. Now, I'm not sure if there's really an order here. These are all kind of appearance-based things. So, but I don't know. What, what do you think is the least important thing? Maybe we'll go there and then we'll kind of organize the middle. What do you think is the least important thing that he should prioritize his money? I remember one thing he mentioned, he wanted a mini fridge just so he wouldn't have to walk to the kitchen. That sounds pretty lazy to me. I think that's my vote for the least thing. Yeah, definitely the mini fridge. Nice work. Although David might like to have cold drinks in his room, it's not that big of a deal to walk to the kitchen. I think that's clearly one. Um, what else? Does he need a you know, stereo system? Yeah, very good. You got it. David has other ways of playing music, like on his laptop. It might be nice to have better sound quality, but that is definitely a want. Now, I'm not entirely sure how we should organize these. You know, I think the bedding, he just didn't like the way it looked. <clears throat> I think the same thing with curtains, posters, and wallpaper. They're probably all about equal of, you know, importance uh, here. So I don't think it matters too much. So maybe I'll just kind of put them in the order that they are so we can kind of move on. Great work. Great work. Great work. Great work. Great. Notice that the items at the left are necessities and will help him do better in school, while the items at the right are luxury items that fall into the wants category. Prioritizing your needs and wants is an important step whenever you make spending decisions. Since David doesn't have an unlimited amount of money to spend, he can use this list to spend his money wisely. Now that reminds me, there is something important we haven't talked about yet. Have I told you how much I love budgets? All the rows and columns and numbers, everything in perfect balance. <sighs> Where was I? Oh, I have some great information about budgeting for you, Mayor. 
A budget is a plan for your money, made up of income and expenses. It can help you spend money wisely. Click to learn more. All right, so maybe you're getting some birthday money. Maybe you get a weekly or monthly allowance. Maybe you sometimes babysit someone you know nearby. Um, and expenses, really anything you have to pay for. Come is the money you're earning, like money you may get for your birthday or allowance from your parents. As you get older, you can earn income from work or from other investments, like stocks or a rental property. All right. An expense is the money you're spending. It includes everything you buy, such as food, concert tickets, or even a pack of gum. Budgets can help you keep track of your expenses and make sure you're not spending too much. Click on each circle to learn more. All right, yeah, so these are generally all the categories of things that you would spend money on. Uh, let's start with income. This would be like a salary. A salary is a fixed payment, usually paid on a weekly or biweekly basis. That doesn't vary depending on how little or how much you work. So sometimes you make, you know, money hourly by how much, how much time you're working. And then sometimes you kind of work, uh, you earn a, if you earn a salary, then you earn a consistent amount of money each period, which makes it easier to plan for. Let's start with a not so fun one, which is taxes. There are different types of taxes you owe to the local, state, and federal governments. You can be taxed on the money you earn, called income tax, or items you purchase, called sales tax. Variable expenses are spending you have some control over, like how much you spend on clothes or food. You have to buy these things, but how much you spend can go up or down depending on the decisions you make. Fixed expenses, like your rent, occur regularly, and the amount doesn't change much from month to month. You'll want to build savings into your budget. This can include savings for an emergency, for college, or to buy a specific item. With discretionary expenses, you control how much you spend. This includes expenses like going to the movies or eating out with friends. Or just something that you want to buy. Think about others and do good for the world by including charity donations in your budget. So we definitely don't want the the balance of uh, expenses of income to look like this. This would mean that we are spending more than we're earning, and that's not a good situation to be in. So we're going to want to seek more balance here. A balanced budget makes sure that you aren't spending more on expenses than you're earning an in income. Isn't that great? Anyway, the budget that David is dealing with is a simple budget. It's just the budget for his project. He already knows his income, which is the money he has saved up, but he'll still need to keep track of his expenses to make sure he does not spend more than his project budget allows. Okay, so I've done some digging online and have found the average price for the things David wants in his room. Can you figure out what his total expenses will be? All right. So David has $200. It's a pretty good amount of money, right? $200. And it seems like the average cost of an alarm clock is $20. Uh, lighting, so like a new lamp, is around $30. Paint, around $30. Posters, $15. A new bedspread, about $50. Curtains, about $40. A mini fridge, about $50. Stereo, being the most expensive, being uh, 70. So if we add all these up, so if we do 20 plus 30 plus 30 plus 15 plus 50 plus 40 plus 50 plus 70, that'll get the total expenses. Looks like we got 305. Let's go with that, Pietro. Nice, thank you for your help. Yep, no surprise there. David can't buy all these items and still stay within his budget. When you're making spending decisions, you typically can't have everything you want, but you can use your money towards the things you want or need the most. 
Prioritizing your spending choices makes it easier to decide which items to buy and which items to pass on. Luckily, you've already prioritized David's list. Now, review his project list to get his expenses under budget. Click. Okay. So based off of the priority list that we made earlier, we're going to cross off the things that are least important. So right now, the, this is the ranking that we chose from before. Um, yeah, looks like it's in the same order. So let's cross off stereo and fridge. Excellent. Now we These have last two items are definitely wants. David can choose to buy these items if he has extra money in his budget left over. David hasn't even started shopping and has already had to make some trade-offs. Whenever David makes a decision, there are other alternatives that he gives up. Right. So you, there's no way you can do everything. Every single decision you make in life means you're not doing something else. If you choose to play basketball as a sport, that means you can't also play you know, um, what's another winter sport? I don't know. We had swimming at my other school. So like you can't really do two things at once or multiple things. So every decision that you're making, you know, even in school, uh, there's there's some trade-offs. The opportunity cost is the next best alternative that was given up by making the decision. For example, by choosing to spend $50 on a new bedspread, David gives up the opportunity to buy a new mini fridge. Mm -hmm. Every decision has an opportunity cost. By choosing to redecorate his room in the first place, David has already run into an opportunity cost. Instead of redecorating, he could use that money to buy a snowboard, something else he's been wanting to buy. That snowboard is going to come back later. So he really, he really does want a snowboard, but it seems kind of further away in the future for him. Looks like you're ready to start shopping. David's older cousin can drive him to the shopping center, but she only has 15 minutes before she has to be back home. This timer will show you how much time David has left to shop. If the timer turns red, it means you've gone over the time limit and David won't be able to catch a ride back with his cousin. This means additional costs for David. He'll have to pay to take the bus home. This shows how much money David has left to spend. Every time David saves money on a purchase, the amount saved will be shown here. If he spends wisely, David might have enough money left over to buy some of those luxury items. That's all there is to it. Ready to shop? Okay, time to go shopping. Oh, wait, David hasn't done any research yet. He was thinking about checking the store websites for prices and product reviews before he goes. All right. Yeah. So we could just go, you know, straight. I think we're going to go to the mall here. So watch how the time is ticking. So every, every this time is also in the equation of our opportunity costs. But, you know, maybe it is a good time, a good use of time to go to the websites, spend some time, see if there's some coupons or any other deals. Maybe there's some sales that we can go in and be more educated about. This will take a few minutes of David's time but it will pay off. By doing research before going to the store, he can find discounts and product quality information that will save him money. However, he does lose this extra time to shop. This lost time is the opportunity cost of his decision. First, let's check some store websites for any upcoming sales or discounts. Ooh, look at there. Beds and Blankets has a 20% off coupon. Oh, yeah, let's print that out, show it on our now, smartphone. Now, let's do some research on product quality. David's mom has an online subscription to Consumer Trends, which posts unbiased reviews of different products. There may be some useful information. So the word unbiased means that um, no company is really influencing their decisions. So it's, it's more honest. It's more true. Perfect. Reviews of different alarm clocks, which to buy and which to avoid. Click the share button to send the information to my tablet. All right. So this red uh, alarm clock got really bad reviews. So if we see that, we're going to want to avoid. This is product to avoid. 
We're all set to head to the stores. You made it to the shopping center. Where to first? All right, so we're at the mall. You've probably seen a mall map before. So these are the names of the stores. So remember on the top of our list, we had was uh, the alarm clock. Socks and things. Thank you, Pietro. Let's go to... Welcome to Clocks and Things, your one-stop shop for all things clocks. What does a clock do when it's hungry? I don't know. Goes back four seconds. Oh. I've got a lot of clock jokes, but the time is ticking. Take a look around to learn more about our clocks. Okay. Which one? We're going to click and we're going to get some information. Uh, we have budgeted $20. And so we'll, let's learn a little bit more about each one. So we have the $8 one. So it has a battery backup. So that means if, uh, you know, the power went out, that it should still work. Definitely the most affordable option and the most basic. It will show you the time, but nothing else. So dual alarms, built-in radio. It's got a snooze button and a battery backup. This one looks familiar. Hmm. One of the more affordable options, but it's not clear why. It has more features than some of the more expensive clocks. Okay. All right. So almost the same features. Looks like this one is on sale. Not anything fancy, but it'll get the job done. Yeah, wow, a sunrise simulator and a phone dock. This clock has some cool features, but those features make it more expensive. So it's a luxury item. Okay, Mayor, let's start comparing these clocks. Drag. All right, so the one with the most features is definitely the one on the end, kind of the more luxury one. Great job. This alarm clock has all the features David could ever want, and then some. The most affordable. Now, when we say the word affordable, it's, it's, it's literally just which one is the cheapest. So the most affordable one is this one. So we're kind, of, we're kind of processing things. Nice one. Just going by price, this clock is the most affordable. Does it have all the features that David needs? Kind of. It's got the basic stuff. But sometimes when we're shopping, it's, um, you know, a compromise. Now, the least reliable. So we do have information about this. We did our research before, and we got that the reviews on this said that this one was not reliable. Hmm. There's no way to tell how reliable the clock is without doing some outside research first. Good thing you did your research ahead of time. It turns out there's a reason why this clock was so affordable. A bunch of other customers said this clock stopped working within weeks of buying it. The savviest consumers gather information on an item's price and quality before making their purchase. Make sure to do your research first, even if it's just a quick web search on your phone. You can combine this research with any new information about the product, like in-store discounts, to make the wisest spending decision before you head to the checkout counter. Based on your research and comparisons, which clock should David buy? So what do you think? Clock is, uh, well, literally the clock is ticking. Um, should we go with the cheapest one? We have budgeted $20. I'm thinking when you're you're kind of looking for the, the best, like, like she said, the, the verge of where price and quality kind of uh, kind of meet. So, you know, where are we getting a good amount of features for a very good Osmo? Yeah, let's go with a $15 one. It's coming in under budget. We're going to save $5. Let's go. Nice. So we just basically kept $5. In Great choice. This clock has all the basics that David needs to wake up on time. Okay, so uh, the next thing was um, we need a, a lamp. So let's go to Lumen's Lighting. Welcome, Mayor. What a pleasure it is to have you at Lumen's Lighting. Before we start, tell me, what did the baby light bulb say to the mama light bulb? 
What is up with these jokes? I don't know. I love you Watts and Watts. It's pretty cute. Okay, I'll get serious now. Winding is serious business, you know, Mayor. Feel free to take a look around the store. Okay, Mayor. Whenever you buy an item, always remember why you're buying it. In David's case, his lamp works, but it isn't bright enough for him to do his homework at night. Budgeting strategy. Know your priorities. Always think before you spend. This includes thinking about how much you're spending and also why you're spending it. So in other words, just because we've budgeted spending $30 on a lamp, should we actually spend $30 on a lamp if really the only reason why why we are here is because the the lamp just isn't bright enough okay so let's look at our options here are the different lighting options click on each one to learn more and then okay so we got this a bright new lighting option no question david will be able to get his homework done with this in his room switching the lampshade for a new one could help let out more light you can swap out the current light bulbs for ones with more lumens. Lumens are the unit of brightness for a light source. More lumens means brighter light. All right. So his lamp is functional. So do we need to replace the whole lamp? Yeah, $8. I think, I think Pietro likes saving money. Let's go. So look, we're going to save... With any decision, $22? consider the range of spending and non-spending options available. Improving the lighting in his room is a high priority for David, but he doesn't necessarily need to buy a whole new lamp to get the results he needs. When possible, try to think of alternatives that can help you save. David could change the lamp, lampshade, or the light bulb and have the same effect on his happiness. There's a sale coming. Click and hold oh. the wait button for 10 seconds if you'd like to stick around for the sale. Is it worth the opportunity cost to give up time to save money? What do you think? Just type yes or no. All right, let's, I want to click. So maybe this is the, the next day or something, who knows? Great, you just received a 10% discount on your lighting purchase. Nice, so we were patient, we saved more money. Spending extra time to wait for sales can save your wallet big time, especially on high priced items like TVs or furniture. But remember, you have to weigh the opportunity cost of waiting. Sometimes you might have to wait weeks or months for a big sale. What if the item is something you need right away? So I think a lot of you know of like Cyber Monday, Black Friday, a lot of TVs, you know, your PlayStation 5s and stuff kind of go on sale, but you got to wait a long time, right? Really only one time a year. So that is your opportunity cost there. All right, we have five minutes left of shopping. We've got the two things that we really need. Where do we want to spend our money uh, now? So we had the bedspread that he wanted. We had the paint. Uh, we have, what is home style? Homestyle probably has, I don't, I don't remember. What do we think? Where do we want to go to next? Maybe Homestyle has the fridge. Maybe. Or maybe Homestyle has the posters. Where do we want to go to next? Clock is ticking. Beds and blankets. Oh, Pietro. I like that. We have a coupon for beds and blankets. Remember, we had 20% off. Here are the different bedspread options. There is a salesperson available that can help David make a decision about what to buy. All right. So it's not that like using a salesperson is, is bad. It's just you need to kind of take some of the information, um, you know, with a little bit of caution, right? They're going to try to make you spend a little money. So sure, let's talk to him, talk to the salesperson, but just, you know, let's not be too trusting. When researching a product, always consider your source. A salesperson or website may have expertise or information that can help you make a purchasing decision. But be on the lookout for biased sources 
that could be pushing you to buy certain items. All right, let's say for five. instance, a salesperson who makes right. commission, that's a percentage of each sale. Right. Great. So at the same time, they make money off information of that you don't. They sell. So that's why they that want to push you to the more expensive. A salesperson is there for one main reason to sell you something. Mm -hmm. Hi. Welcome to Beds and Blankets. Looks like you're here for a new bedspread. Wow, the platinum collection. Let me make a suggestion. This bedspread is part of our platinum collection. It's by far our best one. It's got the highest thread count on the market. You can't get a softer bedspread. All right, we've only budgeted $50. No, says Pietro. All right. Yeah, that's over what we budgeted to spend. So we're, should we say that's more that we want to spend or just kind of look on our own? That's a little more. Okay. Well, we do have another bedspread that's on sale today. It's not on display, but I can find it in the back for you. Look at the one in the back that's on sale. Maybe it's ugly. Maybe it's not. Sure. Okay. It will take a moment. I'll go grab that bedspread from the back for you. So Just waiting wait means... So it's going to cost us some time. Hope it looks good, y'all. Fingers crossed. It's painful watching each second tick away. Great. By waiting for the item, David's opportunity cost was time. He could have spent that extra time making other decisions. It's true. Ready to check out? Which bedspread would you like to buy? So looks like it's got like a, a moose and some birds on it. So we have 50. The one in the back was is the cheapest. It's 35. The, the standard collection's 40. That's still under budget. Uh, the gold collection equals our budget. And we can't really... Uh, you know, justify the platinum one. Which one do we want to spend the money? We still have the coupon. We want the standard or do we want the extra sale? It's kind of a preference here. The standard, okay. I think it's fine. I think, um, you know, David's, I like the sale. You know, it, it's good to entertain sales, but it's not always going to be exactly what you want. Right, I, th I think because David is trying to get rid of dinosaurs, I don't know if he's going to want like other animals on it. Maybe he wants something more plain. So, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose when it comes comes to those. You know, we could have bought it, but I think still feel pretty good. All right, so that's ten dollars under budget, and then we still had the coupon. Do you have your twenty percent off coupon? Oh yeah, great job. You just saved some money on your bedspread. Doing some research before going shopping can really pay off. Uh-oh, Mayor, I made a mistake. I forgot to include sales tax in our budget. Oh, no. So that's a little over 6% in Connecticut, where I live, and New York's, I would think, probably around the same, maybe 7%. Sales tax is the tax you pay to the state or local government when purchasing an item online or at a store. Not all states have a sales tax. Give yourself some wiggle room. It's always good to build some extra cash into your budget in case there are unexpected expenses. All right, I think we're running out of time. I don't think, yeah, we didn't get to it. So um, is it just gonna kick us out? I don't know. Let's see what happens. This department store has a couple things David needs. David oh. has budgeted. Click on the. I thought it would kick us out. Um, so the stars mean how much that David likes it. So what is it? Is that five stars? Honestly, though, we should. We should kind of stop, but I, I think it's going to continue to push us. So we did run out of time. You know, I'm 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 talking over it here. The eight dollar one, okay. It's worth spending the money for something that that he's really gonna like. It's not really a big difference. I think that's a, a pretty reasonable choice. Not bad. You got one poster that David likes and saved some money in the process. 
but for just a few more dollars, you could have increased David's happiness quite a bit. After all, he does have to look at these posters every day. Time to pick new curtains for David's room. Take a look at the options. So basically they're saying like we could have gotten more than one, but you know, maybe he'll really cherish that one poster. Which curtains, the, the blue ones or the green ones? So we bought the green bedspread, but it's a little over budget. Okay, blue, it's probably fine. Oh, wait a second, Mayor. I just thought of another alternative, one that doesn't require any spending. David has blinds on his windows. He could just remove the current curtains and use the blinds instead. I'll add this choice to the list. Think before you spend. When you're making a spending decision, see if there are lower cost options available. That saved money stays right in your wallet, or you could put it away for a rainy day. Think about other times when you have non-spending options, like making a gift or card for someone's birthday instead of buying one, playing a game at home with friends instead of going out, walking or biking someplace instead of driving or taking the bus. Okay, time to choose. What would you like to do? So he already has the blinds at home. You know, should we just use what we already have? You know, it's not going to change the appearance, but it would, uh, you know, keep the room darker. Um, or should we switch out the, lo the look entirely and spend $25? So the free blinds or the blue uh, curtains. I know, Ozma, I know you said before you wanted the blue curtains. Do you still want the blue curtains? Have you changed your mind? Okay, Ozma's still team blue curtains. All right, so maybe, you know, maybe the, the curtain, the, the appearance, you know, it's worth spending the money, still under budget. Okay, fair choice, right? So a lot of this, y'all, remember, not everything is is right or wrong. There's a lot of okay choices in between. I think both choices are totally fine, right? So, sure. We'll go with Ozma's. We'll get the blue. All right, we'll kind of wrap this up. We'll go. Mayor, it's time to figure out the paint color to replace that dinosaur wallpaper. Choose the color that you think David should use. All right, so we have $40 left. Um, uh, so I don't think there's a price difference here. Blue? Okay. We'll go blue. Now you'll have to help David pick which type of paint he should buy in that color. All the paint is the same, but it comes in different sizes. Okay, this is definitely something to pay attention to. Um, here, this is a skill that will, you'll have to do a lot in your life. When comparing something of the same material, but with different sizes, you should look at the item's unit price, which is how much it costs for one unit of the item. Let me show you. Comparing unit prices can help you find the best deal. Click on the items below to find out more information. So 16 ounces is how much there is? This is the quantity of what you're buying. In this case, the quantity is measured in ounces. This is the price of what you're buying. Okay. To find unit price, just divide the cost by the quantity. The unit price of this item is 50 cents per ounce. So you take how much money, $8, and you divide by how much there is. So eight divided by 16 will give you 50 cents for every ounce. Now, let's use unit prices to compare these two items. So this is something that you do, well, maybe not you, but your parents definitely do when they're grocery shopping or something, right? When you're comparing several different types of, I mean, a whole bunch of things, soups, you know, pasta sauces, I don't know, um, a lot of, things pretty much everything you do in a grocery store is you're, you're looking at these types of unit prices right compromising between what you really want maybe or versus how much 
Um, and sometimes this is already provided for you. All right. So Ozma, the the 40, the 48 ounce maybe isn't cheaper in total cost. It's it's but as far as the unit price, the unit price, yeah, the unit price is less, right? And for the most part, if you buy more quantity, you typically, you know, usually not always, it's cheaper per unit, a cheaper unit price. That's why stores like Costco and like BJ's, um, that's really what they do. They You buy really large quantities. Sometimes that's a good thing, right? Container two's unit price is lower, so this item is likely the better deal. But remember, unit price won't tell you anything about the quality of what you're buying. Plus, you might not need so much paint. It's not a great deal if the extra paint goes to waste. Right. So that's kind of an issue with, you know, if, if I'm living alone, maybe I don't need to go to Costco for groceries and buy large amounts of food at a time if, you know, a lot of some of that's going to go with, go to waste. So there is that a balance. There's so much of this, right? That yes, you know, we want to look at the unit price, but we also want to look at, you know, how much or think about how much we actually need to use. Take a look at a few common items and how you can calculate their unit price. Huh? So about $3.50 for a gallon of milk. Um, so $1.50 for a pack of pencils of 10 of them. So that's 15, you're paying 15 cents for each pencil. Uh, snowboarding lights, so even time, right? So how much um, money are you paying for time? So hours, uh, that's a good one. These paint cans come in different sizes. Let's try calculating the unit prices of each can. Calculate their unit price and enter the value below. All right, so some math. So you know, with with um, budgeting and stuff, there's there's going to be some math. So some of you may really like this. So remember, we're going to take the dollar amount. So we're going to take thirty six, and we're going to divide by how much quantity. So what is thirty six divided by four? Let's see if we can get that nine. Thank you, Pietro. All right, what about 24 divided by three? Eight. Eight. And 20 divided by two, that one's pretty easy. Ten. Ten, nice. So proud. All right, so look, this one is the largest quantity and there's this huge banner saying 50% extra, but it's actually, a little misleading because the unit price is actually more expensive than the three gallon. So sometimes this happens and they're sneaky. You got to always, you got to trust yourself, not trust the advertising. Great job. Hmm. The second paint can is the cheapest by unit price, but David only needs two gallons of paint for his room. Which should he choose? All right. Notice how one of the paint cans advertises having more quantity. That's true, but it still wasn't the best deal. Advertisements are created by the company that's selling the product and can be misleading. Savvy consumers combine their own research. All right, so we said that before. So, okay, so unit price is important, like I said, but we also want to keep in mind, right, there's a difference between how much we are saving money and how much we are actually spending. So a lot of businesses try to get you in this mindset, right? Oh, but I saved this much, saved this much. But at the same time, they're actually spending more money than they would have. So the three gallon has the cheapest unit price at $8 per gallon. But for David's room, we only actually need two gallons, right? So if we spend, if we buy the three gallons, that's cheaper per unit price, but we're still paying $4 extra because we don't actually need that extra gallon. So 
right? There's a lot of um, thinking and stuff that's got to go on in these decisions. So I'm going to go with the two gallon here because it's exactly how much we need. It's not going to be wasted. And it's $4 less in total, right? More expensive unit price, but none's going to be wasted. Well done. In this case, David only needed two gallons to paint his room. This might have been the most expensive paint per gallon, but he would have a lot of paint left over with the other two options. You're all done with shopping. Time to look back at our original budget. Budgets are living documents. You should be frequently checking your actual spending against your original budget. Let's see how David's expenses. All right, so remember we budgeted $200 and we have only spent 107. So that's pretty good. So remember, um, some money was taken out because of taxes. So um, that's part of why the money doesn't Great add up. Work. Looks like all your items came in under budget. If you have a hard time sticking to a budget, try paying with cash. This can help you see and keep track of how much you're spending. In fact, some people set cash aside in an envelope that they can spend in a week on specific items. That way, they can easily see how much they have left. So we'll talk about this next time. But yeah, your method of payment does uh, this kind of matter, has some psychological uh, kind of mindsets. So with cash, you're, you're actually seeing exactly how much you're spending. So there's a little bit more of a, an emotional connection there, um, right? May, may sound kind of strange to think about. So you might actually be willing to spend less when you're paying with cash than when you're just kind of swiping a card uh, with a credit or a debit card. Okay, Mayor, let's check your watch to see how you're doing on time. Not good. Looks like you ran out of time. That means you'll have to use those savings to pay for the $5 bus fare. Oh no. Yeah, we went way over time. Turns out you have a little extra money left over so you can splurge on some of those luxury items. You did a great job comparison shopping. Because of your wise spending choices, David has enough money left over to look into some of his splurge items. Take a look at the items in Top Tech. Choose which items you'd like to buy with your extra cash. Remember, there's one other choice. Save the extra cash. David's been eyeing a new snowboard. If he saves this money now, he can use it towards his future snowboard instead. Mm. All right, so we've saved $73 and we still have $10 left in our original budget. So we have $83 essentially. Should we buy the mini fridge? Should we buy the very nice Bluetooth speaker? Or look, it's all sparkly in the air. Or should we kind of wait, put it off for the future and get something that he really, really, really wants and that's gonna make him really happy. Nice, Pietro, I like that. A lot of enthusiasm here. So maybe David's a, a big snowboarder and that would mean a lot more to him. I'm sure the snowboard is very expensive probably. So I like that decision. Might. It might be tough in the beginning, but it'll it's David's gonna feel good when he ends up saving up for that snowboard. And Shopping buy. complete. Let's take a look at all the choices you made and check out David's final room. We're almost done here. Wow. Thanks, Mayor. This is a million times better. I can't wait to have my friends over. That looks a lot better. Look, got blue walls, got curtains. Looks pretty slick. Nicely done, Mayor. Yeah. When you're ready, Got the let's Everest. review some of the choices you made. It looks a lot better than before. We don't have dinosaurs in the room. Yep, we did try choose to buy new curtains. Right? We didn't need them. I think they look pretty good, though. So, right? Look at all those opportunity costs. Every time you make any kind of decision, there's always a trade-off or opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of useful budgeting tips for you along the way, if I do say smart budgeting tips. Always think before you spend. Be realistic. Keep some extra money in your budget for emergencies. 
You never know if you'll run into an unexpected expense. Know your priorities. Think about which items are most important. Don't convince yourself a want is a need. Review and revise. Make sure to revisit your budget regularly and make adjustments. Pay with cash. If you have a hard time sticking to a budget, using cash instead of credit can help you track your spending. Yes, we'll talk more about that next, next time. I couldn't have done it better myself, Mayor. Well done.